Greetings and salutations, everybody. So glad you're here. Uh, we're going to be talking about the new moon of the month of Shavuot. Uh, we know from Genesis chapter 1, verse 14, listen to this. God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And then he says concerning these lights, he says, let them be for signs and seasons and days and years. Well, the new moon is the very beginning of every biblical month. Without the new moon, you wouldn't know when any of the biblical holidays are because the new moon begins every single month. So what we also need to know from Genesis, where it talks about the new moon, he also talks about the tree of life that has a beautiful river flowing around it. And look at Genesis 2.9. It says, out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight, good for food, and the tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So we see the Bible begins with the tree of life. Well, guess what? It also ends with the tree of life. Let's look at Revelation chapter 22, verse 1 and 2. It says, He showed me a river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. And it says, In the middle of its street and on one side of the river and on the other was the tree of life. And look at this. It bore 12 kinds of fruits, yielding its fruit every single month. Can you imagine a tree that produces a different fruit every single month? Well, when it says that, do you think it's talking about January or February? No, it is talking about the biblical months. What about during the millennial reign? Will we be honoring and keeping uh, the new moon uh, when the time that Messiah is here? Well, look at Ezekiel. Chapter 46, verse 1. It says, Thus says the Lord God, the gate of the inner court that looks toward the east will be shut the six working days, but on the Sabbath day it will be opened, and in the day of the new moon it will be opened. So amazing. We're going to be keeping the new moon every month for 1,000 years, and that will be happening very shortly. Now, how about during the new heavens, the new earth, will we then be keeping the new moon after the millennial reign? We'll look at Isaiah chapter 66, verse 22 and 23. God says, as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, will remain before me, says the Lord. He says concerning King David and the Jewish people, so your seed and your name will remain. And it'll happen that from one new moon to another, from one Sabbath to another, all flesh will come to worship before me, says the Lord. So not only will we be keeping the new moon celebration all during the millennial reign, when God creates the new heaven and the new earth and a new sun and a new moon, we will still be keeping that celebration. As a matter of fact, when we look at why God created the moon, it says in Psalm 104, verse 19 through 21, he made the moon to mark the seasons. The sun knows it's going down. He said, God, you make darkness and it is night, wherein all the beasts of the forest creep forth. Even the young lions are roaring after their prey and they seek their food from God. Okay, so he made the moon to mark not just the seasons, winter, spring, summer, fall, but to mark when the appointed times will be, like Passover and Shavuot and tabernacles. And then look at Psalm 81, verse 3 and 4. It says, blow the shofar at the new moon and at the full moon for our feast day, for it is a statute for Israel, an ordinance for of the God of Jacob. So God wants the shofar to be blown at the time of the new moon. So make sure you all can get your shofar if you have one and be sure and blow it. We're going to try to blow it right here. As a matter of fact, this particular ram's horn is really cool. This ram's horn is from one of the Jacob sheeps that are now uh, in Israel. <coughs> Yay. All right. 
But the thing we need to know concerning the new moon, it really is all about God's covenant with King David. Listen to Psalms 89, verse 20. I have found David my servant with my holy oil. I've anointed him. Who my hand will be established. My arm will also strengthen him. It goes on to say in verse 23 and 24, listen to what God says concerning the Jewish people. David from the tribe of Judah. God says, I will beat to pieces his adversaries before him. I will smite them that hate him. But my faithfulness and my mercy will be with him, and through my name shall his horn be exalted. And then in verse 28, 29, it says, Forever will I keep for him my mercy, and my covenant will stand fast with him. His seed also will I make to endure forever in his throne as the days of heaven. And then it concludes with verse 33 through 37. God says, Nevertheless, my loving kindness, I will not utterly take from him, nor will I allow my faithfulness to fail. My covenant I will not break, nor will I alter the word that's gone out of my lips. Once I have sworn by my holiness, I will not lie to David. His seed shall endure forever as his throne, as the sun before me. Now listen, it'll be established forever like the moon, even like the faithful witness in the sky. Whenever you see the moon, be it a new moon, a full moon, a whatever moon, you have to realize that's connected to the Jewish people, how they will always remain. Look at uh, this, Jeremiah 33, verse 25 and 26. It says, thus says the Lord, if my covenant is not with day and night, and if I'm not the one who appointed the ordinance of heaven and earth, then I will cast away the descendants of Jacob and David, my servant. As long as you see the sun and the moon in the sky, you know God is going to be faithful to the Jewish people. Now, in Exodus 12, 2, God says, this month shall be your beginning of months. It'll be the first month of the year to you. So for the Jewish people, God ordained on the calendar that was already set up that Nisan is going to be special for the Jewish people. And that's when the feasts were going to happen. So Israel was set apart. And Gentiles or non-Jews are grafted in, and then we can be set apart as we're grafted into what covenant God made with them. We know that we do not make ourselves holy to God. God makes us holy. Leviticus 20, verse 26, God says, You shall be holy to me, for I, the Lord, am holy. I'm the one who separated you from all the people that you should be mine. How awesome that God separated us and he wants us to belong to him. Okay, with that said, let's stand and let's say the prayer for the new moon. And then I'll do a short teaching on which tribe is with this moon or month together. May it be thy will, Lord, our God and God of our fathers, that you begin for us this month for good and for blessing. May you give to us long life, a life of peace, a life of goodness, a life of blessing, a life of substance, a life of physical health, a life in which there is fear of heaven and fear of sin, a life in which there is no shame or humiliation, a life of wealth and honor, a life in which we love Torah and fear God, a life in which the Lord fulfills the requests of our hearts for good. Amen, Selah. Together, blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who created the skies by your word and all of heaven's hosts with the breath of your mouth. You gave them appointed times and roles, and they never miss their cues, doing their creator's bidding with gladness and joy. You are the true creator who acts faithfully and has told the moon to renew itself. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us by your commandments and commanded us to be a light to the nations and has given us Yeshua, our Messiah, 
the light of the world. It is a beautiful crown for the people of Israel who are carried by God from birth and who will likewise be renewed in the future in order to proclaim the beauty of their creator for his glorious majesty. Blessed are you, O Lord, who renews the moons. Amen. You can be seated. And we're going to take a few minutes and talk about this new month of Shavuot. Does anyone know what tribe is associated with this month? It is Asher. As a matter of fact, let's look at this. In Genesis chapter 30, verse 13, this is one of the names of the tribes. And Leah said, happy am I. And all women will give witness to my joy. And she gave him the name Asher. Asher literally means to be happy, to be blessed. How many of you are Asher? Hey! We should all be happy and blessed. In Deuteronomy 33, listen to verse 24 and 25. And of Asher, he said, uh, this is Moses blessing the 12 tribes. He said, let Asher... Be Asher. In other words, let Asher be blessed with children. Let him be acceptable to his brethren. And then it says, if you remember this concerning Asher, let him dip his foot in oil. Your shoes shall be iron and brass, and as your day, so shall your strength be. Where does oil come from? Okay, from the olive press. How many of you ever heard of Gethsemane? Gethsemane literally means the olive press. And oil is also representative of the spirit, in particular, the spirit of wisdom. Uh, Listen to Proverbs chapter 3, verse 13 and 18. It says, happy is the man who makes discovery of wisdom. There you go together. He who gets knowledge for trading in it is better than trading in silver and its profit greater than bright gold. She is of more value than jewels, and nothing for which you may have a desire is fair in comparison with her. Long life is in her right hand, and in her left hand are wealth and honor. Her ways are ways of delight, and all her goings are peace. She is a tree of life. There it is to all who take her in their hands, and happy is everyone who keeps her. Wow. It goes on to say in verse 23 through 26. Then you will go safely on your way, and your feet will have no cause for slipping. When you take your rest, you will have no fear, and on your bed your sleep will be sweet. You will have no fear of sudden danger or of the storm which will come on evildoers. For the Lord will be your hope and will keep your foot from being taken in the net. Isn't that cool? That is amazing. Well, the constellation for the month of Shavuot and the tribe of Asher is Aquarius. This is where water is being poured out. And we know Torah is likened to water. And we find the Torah was also poured out. Uh, Listen to Habakkuk 2.14. The earth will be full of the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the sea is covered by the waters. Torah has always been likened to water. And uh, some believe that in Shavuot, since, look at this, Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 3. Look at what happened on the very first day of the month of Shavuot. It came to pass in the 40th year and the 11th month. On the first day of the month, this is when Moses spoke to the children of Israel according to all the Lord had given him in commandment to them. So can you imagine? Look, it came to pass. Uh, that it was on the first day of the month of Shavuot that the Torah was given the second time. All of this happened on the first day of the 11th month. Now, Shavuot is January 14th, okay? Now, Thursday, January 28th, is Tuba Shavuot. Now, what does that mean? That's the 15th day of Shavuot. That is a very special day. Tuba Shavuot, just like Nisan 1 is the beginning of the calendar year for the religious calendar, just like Tishri 1 is the beginning of the year for the civil calendar, Tuba Shavuot is the beginning of the year for the sanctification of the fruit on the trees. Listen to this. 
uh, first off, it's in the spring when the trees in Israel begin to bud. And it's the yearly marker for when a farmer could actually eat the fruit of his trees. Listen to this. This is from Leviticus 19, 23 through 25. God says, when you come to the land and you planted all manner of trees, there it is for food, you shall count the fruit as uncircumcised for three years. It's to be uncircumcised, and you can't eat the fruit the first three years. And then it says in the fourth year, all the fruit will be holy to praise the Lord. It's all set apart. And then he says, finally, in the fifth year, you can finally eat the fruit off of the trees that you plant. All right. So you don't plant trees in the middle of winter. Okay. So they needed to know, let's say uh, Tuba Shavat, uh, let's say it's the middle of January. That's the year for knowing when the tree can be eaten on in the fifth year. But if you planted a tree in July, let's say you planted a thousand trees over the year, for heaven's sake, you don't have to count all thousand trees. When was your birthday? When was your birthday? When was your birthday? What they do is, regardless, Tuba Shavat is the beginning of the new year. So if you planted a tree six months in the year, six months later, once Tuba Shavat came, it was counted as a year old regardless. That way they knew that every Tuba Shavat, anything that was planted the previous year is considered a year old. But here's the other thing. You know what this also teaches us? The trees aren't yours. They're God's. He's just given you to be a servant of the trees. Everything we own really comes from God. It's not from the work of our hands. That's why God is requiring things from us. And as we tithe, as we follow what God says, our offerings, we're telling God we understand that you're the one that's in charge, not us. This teaches that while some may claim ownership over physical things, they really are only stewards and need to care for, guard, protect what they are responsible over. Because the Bible says the earth belongs to the Lord. We are only stewards. So what do you do on Tuba Shavat? Well, you're supposed to eat one of the seven species of fruits or eat fruit that day. You can plant a fruit tree. But the big thing, too, is feeding the birds. On Tuba Shavat, feed the birds who live in the trees. That's why of the 613 commandments, even the least, the 613th commandment, God still wants us to take care of the little birds. That's why in Deuteronomy 22, 6 and 7, if a bird's nest comes before you in the way, in a tree, on the ground, whether they're young ones or eggs, and the mother sitting on the young or on the eggs, you shall not take the mother with the babies, but you shall in any wise let the mother go, and then take the young for yourself. And it says that it may be well with you, and you may prolong your days. Wow, you can even extend your life by taking care of the little birds. Now, here's the, I want to close with this one, though. <clears throat> I really believe that when it gives dates in the Bible of different prophetic things happening, I believe the events will happen on that day. Look what's going to happen some year. On the 24th day, it says of the 11th month, which is the month of Shabbat. I don't know what year. Let's listen to Zechariah 1, 7 and 8. It says, on the 24th day of the 11th month, the month of Shavat, in the second year of Darius, the word of the Lord came to Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, the son of Iddo, the prophet, saying, I saw in a night vision a man on a red horse between the mountains in the valley. The vision of the red horse rider of Revelation took place on the 24th day of Shavat this year. I don't know if it's going to happen this year or what year, but I believe that is good every year to keep an eye on the biblical calendar. With that said, let's stand. We'll close. And we just pray that God would give us eyes to see. Father, we just thank you for the new moon of Shabbat. And when we look at some of the biblical things that happened during Shabbat and how important it is to you uh, that we plant trees, uh, that we take care of the animals. Father, but also that judgment will fall. Father, we just pray right now that you would prepare your people, that each and every one of us would have a heart to obey. And even as you told Moses to say to Aaron to tell your people that you would put your name on them, you told him to say, Eva Rekka, Adonai, Vaish Mareka, Yaer, Adonai, Panavileka, Vihuneka. Ye saw Adonai, Panavileka, Vyasem Laka, Shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In that most wonderful name, Eye, 
Asher Eyeh. Amen. Go in peace.